Okay, so thank you, Olga, for speaking to our group this evening. Um, Olga Kirilova teaches at the Film and Media Studies Department in the University of Kansas in the United States. And she's also taught as a professor in the Department of Cultural Studies and of the Political Science Department at the National University of Kiev Mahila Academy in Kiev. Olga graduated from the University of Cambridge, the Slavonic Department in the Faculty of Modern and Medieval Languages, with an MPhil in European Literature in 2001. She also holds two doctoral degrees, um, the Candidate of Sciences in Philosophy, which is equivalent to our PhD, and a Doctor of Sciences in Cultural Studies, which is equivalent to the Habilitation degree. And she obtained both of those in Ukraine. Professor Kirilova's work in film theory has introduced new fields of study, namely than thanatology of film, so also known as death film studies, and cinematic decadence, which resulted in her book, The Cinematic Decadence, Approached by Cultural Studies and Philosophical than Thanatology, which was published in Kiev in 2017, and that's in Ukrainian. Her previous book, The Cold Moon Sickle, Reconstruction of Sensuality Patterns, was published in Russian in 2010 and was a study in Lacanian post-Sovietology. A version of the seminar paper that Olga's delivering this evening is forthcoming later this month in part one of a two-part special issue of the Open Access Journal Apparatus, which we all know very well, and that's titled The Haunted Medium, Moving Images in the Russian Empire, which is edited by Natasha Drubek, Oksana Chefranova, Denise Youngblood, and me. So thank you very much, Olga. Um, over to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's noon central time in the US. Uh, and uh, I'm really delighted um, uh, to be invited as a speaker uh, by uh, Dr. Rachel Morley and by Dr. Phil Cavendish, uh, so that uh, I really hope that uh, we are going to have a fruitful discussion today. Um, well, uh, um, in a way, going on with our discussion of what Ukrainian cinematic decadence was in terms of Russian Empire, and uh, uh, it would not be an exaggeration to say that uh, um, addressing um, the very notion of decolonizing uh, is uh, uh, kind of um, uh, the heat of this fall, and perhaps for the uh, whole next year. Uh, year in, the, in the, uh, Slavic studies, um, and uh, I'm trying to uh, focus um, on this uh, decolonizing in film studies, and decolonizing film history uh, means for me basically undermining the grand narrative of empire. And the main, uh, the main statement I would argue today is the objection of any full-fledged Ukrainian cinematography in pre-Soviet times, not to mention the Ukrainian cinematic decadence. Uh, this um, uh, statement is supposed to be the main subject to decolonization of the film history in Slavonic perspective. And we may call uh, that a paradigm of three empires with the priority of the second, the Soviet empire, uh, claim to bring in the big style as aesthetically overestimated Soviet avant-garde uh, when Eisenstein and Dovzhenko are announced prior to their predecessors neglected as decadence, uh, which was um, uh, something negative, obviously, for Soviet film critics. Uh, and then, obviously, Gesamtkunstwerk Stalin after Burgess Grois and the great art house of so called collective and Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh, that served as a pattern for the post Soviet empire and uh, it's praised for the establishing the uh, National Republic cinematographies as opposite to Russian Empire claimed to have absorbed the minor ethnic and national components which get uh, announced to be um, uh, Russian by default and um, uh, this notion of uh, uh, Russian by default for any um, Ukrainian, Moldavian, uh, uh, Asian um, uh, decadent elements uh, of um, 
uh, the, the uh, film production in Russian Empire is uh, quite uh, symptomatic. And in fact, uh, it's a paradigm directly inherited from Soviet to post-Soviet film scholars and adopted by the majority of the Western film scholars, basically without um, uh, any, appropriate, any appropriate revision. Uh, and um, unfortunately, uh, this uh, statement uh, is uh, often um, supported also by the leading Ukrainian film scholars, uh, such as, um, for example, Volodymyr Myslavsky from Kharkiv, uh, who is obviously number one in the Ukrainian film photography of the first half of the uh, 20th century. Uh, still, he insisted that we cannot speak on the Ukrainian national cinematography before the establishing of uh, WUFKU, um, the abbreviation for all Ukrainian photo cinema administration uh, in 1922, uh, the year of birth of the Soviet Empire. And numerous works of Myslavsky by the way, remain untranslated in English, as well as the classical work L'Histoire du Cinéma Ukrainien by uh, Lubomir Hoseiko, uh, a French film scholar <coughs> of Ukrainian origin. Uh, Zao Hoseiko plays more, um, uh, pays more attention to the alternative uh, state film production Ukraine Film, uh, which was established um, by uh, 1918 um, in Ukrainian People's, uh, People's Republic, including the brightest decadent writers and film directors. Um, uh, but uh, still Haseika uh, recognized the uh, dependence of this failed film production project of the failed state of Ukrainian People's Republic itself. And instead of the priority of the state as synonyms to national, in terms of nat national culture, uh, in establishing uh, the state film production, I would offer the concepts of presence and context, either Ukrainian or any other national or ethnic context. Uh, or presence uh, within the context of Russian or basically any other empire. And um, we face uh, the case when these are exactly contexts, not the state engendering an independent work of Ukrainian decadent motion picture art. Uh, it's not the act of political will, it's not the, any uh, national film project which uh, have failed as, uh, which might have failed as um, uh, you can see in the case of uh, Ukraine film and um, this context uh, engendering uh, the uh, Ukrainian decadent uh, masterpiece, uh, I obviously mean uh, the film adaptation of The Lie by Volodymyr Vinnychenko, um, uh, produced uh, in 1918, which was my archival finding. And uh, I will say uh, a couple of words uh, on this finding. Uh, uh, in my presentation. Uh, I would argue the subversive potential of cinematic decadence towards any grand narrative in film history and theory, as well as the potential of decadence as such as a social aesthetic movement in the political life. Uh, that's why I will address in this talk not only uh, uh, specifically Ukrainian issues, but much broader range of ethnic and national cinematographies uh, launched by the same, uh, of, of, often the same decadent figures uh, who were marginalized by the Soviet grand narratives uh, of film history and uh, film critics. And uh, please let me address uh, this uh, epigraphical example from the poster of our today's meeting uh, with Vega Holodnaya or Vega Holodna uh, in the last tango, why it was actually uh, chosen. Uh, we remember that the Russian <clears throat> Empire uh, had already split by 1918 
and Vega Sieverna, Vega of the North, as she called herself in her fictional filmic biography, the Tourney Way of Glory, or so-called Bertini of the North, as film critics called her, comparing to Francesca Bertini, who also acted as a girl from the people, uh, Francesca Bertini as uh, Italian, Vera Holodna as Ukrainian, uh, she moved towards the south, to Odessa. Uh, we remember that uh, Vera Holodnaya or Vera Holodna was born in Ukraine and she died in Ukraine uh, in the age of um, 25. And she left behind her in Moscow the refined decadent images created by Evgeny Bauer, uh, who was the father of the symbolism uh, in film art. Uh, and um, Obviously, both the film directors working with her in Odessa, uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky, as well as Piotr Cherdinian, chose uh, for her uh, primarily uh, Italian, uh, Spanish, or Latin American uh, subjects. At not just because the CSI site was so close. The Italian decadent stories based on uh, Gabriele D'Annunzio, or Guido da Verona, or Luciano Zuccoli, uh, including the most um, uh, uh, um, favorite plot of uh, Danunzionesimo Cinematografico La Filia Iorio, the daughter of Iorio, uh, by G Gabriele Danunzio, filmed by uh, Cerdinian fully at the shore of the Black Sea uh, under the uh, um, title Azra. Uh, all those films got faded and lost, but they survived eight minutes bit of the last tango uh, becomes the uh, core of the new Odessa image of Vira Holodna. Um, because uh, this image uh, was on the one hand, uh, the decadent and thanatological related to death image of tango and Tangistka, and here I refer to performing femininity, a woman as a performer in early Russian cinema by Rachel Morley. Uh, but on the other hand, this image um, is not just cosmopolitan, but substantially decolonial. Uh, both uh, Argentina from uh, the Independence Day declared in 1816. Uh, uh, and uh, Odessa in less than uh, a year remaining of Holodnaya's life uh, became the free lands of conflicts caused by recolonization and partial colonization of certain uh, bits of territories. Uh, we remember that Vera Holodna arrived uh, at Odessa in July 1918, um, but um, uh, Odessa had already become, by that time, uh, the part of Ukrainian People's Republic, uh, somewhat uh, simultaneously remained for two months from mid-January uh, to uh, mid-March uh, in um, 1918, a separatist Bolshevik state, so-called Odessa Soviet Republic, and um, uh, before then had been announced a free city state of Odessa. Uh, with uh, certain political and economical autonomy, where all the ethnic minorities could develop their languages and cultures, and the majority as such was absent. Uh, besides any compulsory uh, Ukrainization was um, prohibited, as well as no priority was announced for uh, Russian language. Uh, while in Odessa, uh, Vera Holodna, as far as we re remember, faced the uh, Austrian occupation uh, supporting the regime of Ukrainian Hetman Pavlos Karapatsky, uh, the split of one more empire, Austrian Hungarian, in October, which um, uh, inevitably influenced the general political situation in Odessa and broader in Ukraine. Um, then the restoration of uh, the Nechenko and Petlura government of Ukrainian People's Republic in November, and the final displacement of Ukrainian troops from Odessa uh, under majorly French forces of the Triple Entente, uh, supporting the White uh, Army invasion. And this was the political context of her uh, death in Odessa in um, February. Uh, uh, 
1919 of Spanish flu, not to mention the conspiracy theories of her ties with French intelligence and uh, with the white governor of Odessa, uh, Grisha Nalmazov. Uh, and um, uh, the mentioned uh, uh, majorly Western European uh, powers, well, in a way, colonial powers on the background uh, of splitting empires, Russian and Austrian, Hungarian in Holodnes um, uh, lifetime, uh, truly reverberate the Argentinian uh, context uh, between the uh, Spanish decolonization and the simultaneous uh, par uh, partial colonization uh, of uh, Argentina uh, by the United Kingdom, I mean uh, Falkland Islands, uh, which uh, remain colonized uh, uh, until now, and this question is not um, uh, being resolved. Uh, so that um, as, uh, as we remember, uh, the uh, film by Viskovsky uh, constituted uh, five parts and lasted supposedly 67 minutes, um, yeah, but the survived frag fragment of uh, uh, eight minutes really uh, constitutes the essential, we can tell, uh, claw, uh, a, a tango woman, uh, uh, is uh, kind of uh, uh, desperately uh, uh, split apart uh, between uh, your partner Joe on the Argentine stage and um, um, uh, she leaves him with a wealthy British Sir Stone for Paris. And uh, you can see on uh, these uh, several shots that the Argentinian dancer uh, uses the um, bodily double speak uh, in a way, uh, colonial body language. It's not just the body language of the patriarchal enslaving tango. As we remember that uh, tango was initially male and colonial dance for black slaves in Argentina. Uh, but first of all, the language of the fan on all the uh, three shots um, here on the slide, uh, which was the courteous language of the uh, Spanish culture. Um, uh, but uh, as we remember, if uh, Sir Stone um, uh, used soft power uh, with this Argentinian beauty, her Argentinian partner, uh, Joe, assassinated her in the last dance in Paris. This scene is already missing from the film, um, uh, uncovers uh, the paradox of um, uh, cultures uh, uh, being decolonized, self-decolonizing, uh, when uh, he applies more violence and more patriar patriarchal uh, repression to the female uh, subaltern, uh, then um, the um, uh, bearer of uh, colonial discourse. That's um, uh, what, uh, in particular, Gayatri Spivak uh, uh, tells in her theory of subalterns uh, that um, uh, self-liberating national culture uh, is uh, usually much more cruel towards uh, the female uh, subaltern. Uh, some can actually raise an objection uh, of this Odessa image that the production might have been uh, released by Viskovsky oh. in Moscow before Hagetono studio mo uh, moved to Odessa. Uh, uh, but uh, the point is that uh, the last tango or under the burning sky of Argentine and English translation was a topic relating to Odessa as on the one hand, the Romans um, uh, uh, as the basis of the plot was written uh, by the famous Jewish uh, singer uh, Isa Kramer who resided in Odessa um, in uh, 1918 uh, and um, uh, he uh, immigrated uh, the next year uh, when uh, life in Odessa became uh, completely unbearable uh, uh, because of uh, uh, crime, hunger, um, pandemics, and uh, all that kind of thing. Uh, as the Vega Holodna did not succeed. Uh, uh, 
uh, to immigrate as far as we remember so uh, it's always told that uh, um, uh, uh, she just denied any immigration for herself and her family uh, and um, uh, that's why uh, this exactly um, the plot, this tango implied, first of all, the atmosphere of Odessa, where is a, a, a Kramer uh, lived. And on the other hand, Vera Holodna uh, performed this tango in theaters and cabaret in Odessa with her screen partner Osip Runic, uh, often with this uh, is a Kramer soundtrack. Um, uh, by the way, we don't have any recordings by Isa Kramer and as um, uh, she uh, uh, did not go on with um, singing this um, uh, tango song uh, in immigration in 1920s. Uh, so that um, uh, the um, last tango, this tango of death of uh, Vera Holodna and uh, Osip Runic um, became a part of the local uh, performance, uh, even if uh, some sets uh, in the film were uh, set in Moscow. Uh, so to say, it became the part of local Odessa text. Uh, shall I remind that the author of this film, Vyacheslav Viskovsky, a native of Odessa, was one of so-called uh, three whales uh, of the cinematic decadence who were born uh, in Russian empire, though uh, none of them was really Russian as far as we, we remember. Evgeny Bauer, who was um, a Czech from Moscow, Sevlod Mirholt, who was a German from uh, Penza, and Vyacheslav Viskovsky, who was half Polish, half Jewish from uh, Odessa. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and uh, though uh, uh, you could mention uh, around a dozen of uh, other uh, decadent art house practitioners um, in uh, uh, the cinematography on, of Russian Empire, either um, these were um, uh, some. Um, uh, people of the theater uh, who wanted um, uh, to make some experiments um, on the screen, like uh, uh, Alexander Sanin uh, uh, or Alexander uh, Taigov, um, uh, or um, this might be purely uh, film practitioners, uh, most famous, uh, such as Vladimir Gagdin or Yakov Kratazanov or Piotr Cherdinin, or maybe less known, uh, Alexander Uralsky, Viktor Tuzhansky or Alexander Volkov, who became uh, better known uh, on the uh, West, basically in France, as the author of the famous uh, Casanova with uh, uh, Ivan Mazzuchin. Uh, and um, uh, Still, these three um, uh, uh, whales of um, the decadent uh, cinema of Russian Empire uh, remain the principal. And um, we remember that their heritage um, uh, was of different uh, lot, uh, as Evgeny Bauer created around uh, 80. Um, uh, well, there are different records, you can never get. Um, uh, an absolute record, uh, still around 80 short and full length silence. Um, uh, nearly the fifth part of them uh, survived uh, and um, they were published mainly owing to uh, Professor Yuri Tsivyan, a film scholar from Tartu in Estonia and from Chicago in the US. Sevlod uh, Meholt completed just uh, two films, uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray after Oscar Wilde and uh, The Strong Man based on the novel by Stanislav Przybyszewski. Um, and, um, uh, as far as we remember, Mayhold started the third uh, project, uh, which was the Created Legend, uh, based on uh, a, a trilogy by Fyodor Solovov, um, uh, symbolist trilogy, uh, but uh, this work uh, had been interrupted by the social, uh, socialist uh, revolution, uh, and uh, none of um, uh, well, none, none, none of the two films of Mirholt uh, uh, nor Sologu footage uh, really survived. Uh, and um, 
Visconsky is uh, remember filmed relatively as many silence as Bauer did, not to mention six feature films of uh, Soviet period, uh, and only. Um, uh, eight uh, in general uh, survived mostly in bits uh, and uh, pieces. The ninth, uh, the minoret of death was uh, recently uh, uh, discovered uh, uh, at uh, Uzbek film in Uzbekistan, uh, I believe. Uh, and um, uh, if uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, we speak uh, on uh, cinematic decadence in term uh, in terms of uh, death studies uh, as um, the death of any decadent uh, is his main kind of masterpiece according to one more uh, uh, script writer Nikolai Yevgenov so that uh, we remember that Sevlod uh, Mehold uh, was killed in prison after uh, absolutely unbearable tortures and the official version of uh, his shooting uh, served just uh, coverage for numerous much more horrible versions. Uh, uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky was, uh, so to say, murdered by precarity. It's a new expression from um, uh, Chicago, which emerged on the verge uh, of this year, AC's Convention on Precarity, as uh, just in some five years uh, um, from his uh, suicide, uh, first suicide uh, attempt uh, in uh, 1928 uh, and um, to his death of the heart attack in 1933, uh, he was uh, desperately trying uh, to regain a full-time job at the uh, studio Sevzab uh, Kino in Leningrad, uh, and uh, he was finally shrunk. He did not succeed, so that this kind of murder by precarity uh, uh, becomes a, a vivid strategy uh, since uh, Stalinist times. You do, do not always need um, a concentration or filtration camp. Uh, and Evgeny Bauer seemed uh, really the luckiest among them, as he simply died of pneumonia, which was the result of uh, broken leg complication just several months uh, before um, the start of uh, the civil war in Russia in uh, 1917. So that uh, the Bauer was the only uh, who uh, did not have to uh, survive uh, the complete dehumanization which preceded the uh, death of the uh, decadent uh, film director. So here we are, if we are talking uh, on the whales of um, the cinematic decadence on the film directors, um, uh, we should explain what we actually mean by cinematic uh, decadence. Uh, we can tell that in some recent few years, uh, the new uh, research field of so-called decadence film uh, studies emerged, uh, uh, well, basically, um, in the English speaking academic era, uh, there is a number of scholars from the UK, uh, from the US and uh, Canada, for example, David Weir or Patrick Woodstock. Um, uh, and uh, though I would uh, refer to my definition given in. Um, the book on the slide, the cinematic decadence uh, approached by uh, death studies and culturology, uh, which was published uh, in uh, 2017 uh, in Ukrainian language in Kiev, uh, where the definition of the cinematic decadence is based on the four major criteria. Uh, symbolism as literary symbolism, uh, stylization as Arnaud was stylization, intertextuality, uh, the reference to the um, uh, whole um, visual and verbal text of decadence culture, and recon reconstruction as the main task of cinematic decadence um, is the reconstruction of fin de siècle decadence by means of the motion picture art uh, in a decadent um, 
a film in its strictest uh, meaning, the decadent worldview is expressed in terms of the cultural language of symbolism by visual means using Art Nouveau style, uh, the system of decadent motives uh, such as death, suicide, perversions, addictions, and so on and so on, or certain uh, codes represented as uh, cultural myths and um, uh, visual icons. Uh, in post-colonialism, uh, uh, the decadent and the decolonial uh, might become synonymous as they subvert and undermine the meta narratives of empires and help to find national identities through the subtle uh, differences, uh, what Jardin called uh, difference, um, through a uh, or diversities, uh, what we mean in the US by diversities. Um, uh, and um, in this view, national cinematography is regarded not as an attempt to create a meta narrative alternative to the imperial meta narrative, but as um, a certain locality creating cultural difference on, on the margins of the cinematography of Russian empire. And um, our task is to uh, trace those uh, localities. Uh, if we return to um, uh, the film directors of uh, cinematic decadence of Russian Empire, namely to Vyacheslav uh, Viskovsky, uh, we remember that uh, he supported diversity, uh, which resulted in his contribution to um, uh, various national and ethnic cinematographies, as in the period of Russian Empire, he produced uh, Alim the uh, Crime and Brigand uh, in uh, 1916, uh, which uh, is considered by uh, Crimean Tartar communities as their first national uh, feature film. Uh, then in the brief pre-Soviet period of Ukrainian People's Republic, he filmed the first and the uh, last masterpiece of independent Ukrainian cinema cinematic decadence, which was the lie, uh, based on the eponymous play by Volodymyr Venetchenko, who ruled the Ukrainian People's Republic actually at that time. And uh, finally, in uh, the Soviet times, uh, Viskovsky contributed to the foundation uh, of um, the cinematography of Uzbekistan with the first um, uh, feature film, uh, The Minarets of uh, Death, uh, at the um, so-called Buch Kino, uh, film production um, in Bukhara, uh, which uh, served as the basis for the future Uzbek film studio. Uh, and the slow revival of uh, his heritage on the archival festival screen starts um, uh, in context of discovering ethnic and national cinematographies, um, uh, basically relieved from uh, this cinematic context of Russian Empire. And um, uh, as Alim, the Ukrainian high, highwayman, uh, which was Alexander Dranko's film production, uh, entered uh, the program of the uh, Crimean Frame uh, Film Festival uh, in uh, April um, uh, 2021 uh, in uh, Simferopol, or as uh, it was announced, uh, Akmesit, uh, as Crimean uh, Tatars uh, pronounce it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not uh, sure. In, um, exact pronunciation and um, uh, we can actually tell on this uh, event um, as um, on an event separating Crimean Tatars from within uh, kind of both the context of Russian Empire and contemporary Russian occupation of Crimea. Uh, and uh, the Soviet uh, silent film, The Minerals of, of, of This, uh, filmed by Viskovsky in uh, 1925, um, was digitized for the premiere at Venice Biennale by the members of uh, Uzbekistan National Pavilion. Um, and uh, afterwards, um, as far as I know, they um, yeah, succeeded to um, make uh, screenings in um, some more film festivals. Um, uh, so that um, 
uh, it's kind of uh, um, the basis for the uh, national uh, cinematography of Uzbekistan. And it was uh, the co-production as Vyacheslav Viskovsky uh, worked um, uh, for uh, CF Zapkino studio uh, in Leningrad uh, at the time. And uh, it was a co-production uh, with the experimental uh, studio in Bukhara, and the first uh, feature film uh, in uh, Bukhara. Uh, but uh, as um, uh, our emphasis is uh, still on um, Ukrainian film, uh, shall we? Uh, address uh, the uh, issue uh, of uh, uh, the existence of uh, national cinematography as ethnic uh, within the so-called screen ghetto uh, in the film process of Russian uh, empire. The problem with the Ukrainian cinematography was that um, uh, the empire absorbed, obviously, such important centers of film production as uh, Kyiv, Odessa, Kharkiv, and um, uh, some uh, other centers of Ukrainian cinematic decadence as well. Uh, and the search for specifically national cinematography would be inevitably narrowing, narrowing its um, uh, uh, meaning either uh, to the approach to uh, the topics from the national history uh, or referring to the uh, folk matters. And uh, in um, uh, this uh, colonial mode, uh, Ukrainian subject used to coexist in the cinematography of the uh, empire with equally marginalized uh, Jewish, Polish, uh, Asian, uh, Caucasian and other uh, subjects. And uh, this was obviously uh, uh, clearly imperial approach as um, it was set in the first feature film on Ukrainian subject, which was uh, Taras Bulba, the same uh, by uh, Alexander Drenkov, um, filmed uh, in 1999 um, and was based on the epic story of the family of Cossack warriors. Um, uh, in 17th century, uh, which was a part of uh, imperial uh, literary narrative, uh, of course, uh, as uh, Mykola Gogol or Nikolai Gogol, uh, uh, depends on uh, his uh, uh, desperate um, attempts uh, to fit uh, in the official literary culture of St. Petersburg and um, to uh, appeal uh, by uh, folk Ukrainian uh, narratives uh, um, uh, in this context, uh, so that Gorel um, just exploited uh, successfully Ukrainian ethnographic and historic subjects uh, in uh, St. Petersburg literary uh, milieu, having created uh, obviously Ukrainian cultural patterns uh, within the imperial um, optics. And um, uh, this uh, trend uh, started by Drankov in uh, the film, was uh, successfully uh, continued by uh, such Ukrainian filmmakers uh, as uh, Danilo Sakhnenko with his private studio in Katerinoslav, uh, contemporary Dnipro, uh, Ukraine, who created the first uh, national Ukrainian film product, um, uh, Cossacks of Zaporizhia, and um, a number of uh, films uh, on Ukrainian historical subjects. Uh, uh, and uh, there was the whole um, number of uh, his uh, uh, followers, like uh, Oleksa Oleksienko in uh, Kharkiv, uh, or Ivan Tarabochny, uh, who put on the screen his um, uh, own um, folklore plays, uh, not only on Ukrainian, uh, but on Jewish subjects uh, as well. Uh, so that um, uh, that's what uh, I call uh, Ukrainian get uh, on the screen of uh, um, uh, Russian Empire. And uh, what's uh, the difference uh, with um, uh, the Ukrainian cinematic decadence, uh, the lie. Uh, 
we remember that um, this um, uh, um, splitting apart with ghettoization uh, uh, starts with the play uh, as um, when uh, the lie, uh, the play uh, by Vladimir Vodnichenko, which was completed uh, by um, uh, 19. Um, and then and uh, appeared on the Ukrainian stage in 1911. Um, uh, it um, uh, got at once a critical reception of a revolutionary play because it um, just broke with this ethnographical insularity of the national drama, not to mention the film. Uh, and um, uh, numerous critics uh, praised Venichenko uh, that he uh, transcended Ukrainian drama to the European decadent um, uh, pattern. Uh, and uh, the uh, plot uh, raised uh, some uh, universal uh, international decadent uh, issues, so to say, uh, the, uh, the same as discussed in plays by uh, Ibsen or Galtman or Danuzzo. And uh, this was the first uh, step out um, the uh, ethnic Ukrainian ghetto um, within um, uh, the Ukrainian theater. Uh, and um, uh, we remember what uh, happened afterwards um, uh, in the um, uh, film processes as uh, um, uh, there was still a short period of uh, Ukrainian independent, um, uh, not only decadent cinema uh, in uh, 1918 after the declaration of Ukrainian People's Republic um, and um, Ukrainian film as the first governmental film studio project was established in Kiev, um, in the capital of the newly born republic. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, as uh, um, the capital of uh, uh, Ukrainian Soviet Republic uh, was establishing in uh, Kharkiv. Uh, well, uh, there are some kind of months in difference, uh, which is not that significant. Uh, and um, the Ukraine film studio uh, included in their diverse plans the works of the brightest uh, Ukrainian decadent writers, not only Vladimir Venichenko, but uh, um, Alexander Olesi, Mikola Vorany, and uh, a number of other so-called Ukrainian symbolists. Uh, and um, uh, the mentioned uh, French historian, film historian, Lyubomir Hoseika, uh, mistakenly stated that um, the lie as well as another Venichenko's play, The Black Panther, uh, were produced by Vyacheslav Viskovsky on uh, Ukraine film. Uh, the other mentioned film scholar from Kharkiv, Volodymyr Myslavsky, uh, corrected Hoseika that both productions were planned uh, but not filmed at the Ukraine Film Studio by another film director, Vygmunt uh, Veselovsky, who was a Polish from Lviv, uh, but Myslavsky at the same time mistakenly argued that Wyskowski uh, could not have authored the lie as he was um, hired uh, by Dmitry Haritonov's production in Odessa at uh, the same time, so that Myslavsky uh, was obviously unaware that uh, the lie by Wyskowski actually existed and probably uh, remains unaware. Um, and uh, this film adaptation was created in a pause between uh, two presidential terms, so-called presidential terms of Vladimir Venichenko in Ukrainian uh, government. Um, uh, when, uh, and in this pause, as um, uh, we remember, uh, Venichenko uh, just evacuated um, to Berdyansk from uh, Kyiv, uh, from the Russian uh, troops uh, of General Muravyov, um, and uh, in um, uh, 
uh, this course, actually, the, uh, the main question if uh, if you might contribute uh, to uh, 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 to the script uh, as uh, Venichenko was um, really successful playwright uh, in uh, Russia uh, on on Russian stage uh, in the pre-revolutionary times, not only in Moscow, not only in Saint Petersburg, but uh, um, uh, the whole range of uh, Russian provincial um, uh, theaters um, uh, uh, staged his uh, numerous plays, and uh, Zhao uh, was uh, uh, claimed as uh, uh, illegal by Russian security uh, services. He always um, uh, staged after uh, uh, under his own name, uh, which is amazing. Uh, but um, as for uh, the scripts, uh, well, uh, whether he uh, contributed, whether uh, he was uh, aware, uh, we just don't know. Uh, as um, the lie was supposedly filmed on the uh, Bio Film Studio in Moscow, uh, not on the territory of Ukraine. And um, uh, Venichenko might have known of uh, this production or might not have known, uh, but um, uh, there is still um, uh, some um, uh, possibility uh, that uh, it might have been um, also Dmitry Hayatonov's production in uh, Odessa, um, but probably not, as there would have been a different uh, cast uh, and that the um, I mean, uh, uh, female star would have been very uh, holodne uh, in this case, uh, and um, uh, she was obviously not. It was Maria Gorichova who worked on uh, Bia Film Studio. Uh, but um, why are we in doubt? Actually, the um, uh, mm, uh, by a film production was attributed uh, by a Russian film historian, Rashid Yangirov, uh, um, uh, with no actual um, uh, proofs, uh, as um, uh, there are no film uh, reviews or posters, and the same uh, the film is lacking titles or uh, intro titles, um, uh, as the lie was not supposedly released because of the conflagration uh, that destroyed the by film studio uh, in um, uh, 1919, uh, so that. Um, uh, there is uh, just some raw editing in the last six part of uh, this film, so that we don't we don't have a, a film poster of for the lie, uh, but uh, we have made some of our posters as the, this film was um, screened uh, twice, and the posters uh, courtesy to screenings organizers, uh, Doctor Sasha Dovzik uh, in London who is currently in the, the University College London um, hosting us uh, today, but uh, the screening was uh, at the Burbank School of Arts. Uh, and um, uh, uh, the second um, poster, it's uh, uh, the one day um, archival uh, uh, festival in Odessa film studio, actually based on the same place um, as uh, Dmitry Hagetunov um, uh, film studio um, uh, used to be on uh, the French Boulevard in Odessa. And um, uh, it was kind of uh, the first uh, uh, anniversary of uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky. Uh, he would uh, have never expected that it would um, ever happen. Uh, so uh, that, um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we can, uh, uh, the, the main question, why um, uh, can we judge uh, actually the lie as um, uh, a piece of cinematic uh, decadence? And um, what's, um, uh, what's specific about um, uh, uh, this film uh, in, uh, 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 what, what's specific um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, diversity 
as um, it's not obviously integrated uh, uh, around uh, some kind of uh, uh, national idea or idea of Ukrainian national um, uh, decadence, but uh, it integrates um, uh, a totally unique uh, team uh, of um, actors uh, uh, who also contributed to this uh, diversity. Um, uh, gathering the bits and pieces of ethnic cinematographies of Russian Empire uh, and creating uh, some national cinematographies on this um, uh, basis. So that um, uh, let's answer the first question as the lie by Viskovsky totally corresponds to the criteria of the uh, cinematic decadence we have mentioned as it's based on a decadent uh, plot uh, by uh, Vladimir Venichenko. Um, it has a decadent narrative pattern in uh, its uh, basis. It's uh, so-called uh, pattern of the sacred uh, decadent love uh, triangle, which uh, includes um, uh, three uh, male uh, figures um, around um, uh, the central female uh, character. Uh, uh, a, a figure of uh, the husband, the creator, uh, the god, as um, in the film uh, he is um, transformed into an aircraft uh, engineer. He is kind of uh, um, uh, uh, sacrificing himself uh, to uh, the sky, to the sky industry, uh, though he is uh, deceived by his wife. Uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, uh, the devil, the seducer, and the archangel, who uh, the archangel who is uh, the youngest um, uh, lover, uh, and um, uh, in uh, in terms of visuality, it's the subject of uh, total stylization, stylization of uh, uh, actors with their appearances, uh, gestures, and mimicking, uh, stylization of the film uh, frames displayed as uh, symbolist paintings, uh, stylization of uh, mise-en-scene, which um, uh, is extremely important for Viskovsky work with mise-en-scene, work with the uh, depths of uh, frames. Um, in the Art Nouveau stylization of interiors, floral, floral compositions, and so on and so on. Um, in terms of decadent motifs, uh, we obviously face um, uh, such widespread uh, motifs of disease and degeneration, like the husband's uh, illness uh, uh, making him uh, hypothetically important, uh, or the motive of uh, decadent love as uh, addiction and uh, hatred, which is displayed by the seducer, or the motive of untamed sexuality, or the motive of uh, suicide, which is a spoiler. Uh, and um, there are obviously decadent codes uh, included apart from motives. Uh, um, the major um, uh, uh, is perhaps uh, uh, the code uh, of uh, uh, Salome as uh, in um, different parts of the play and uh, in the inter interpretations of the play and um, uh, in uh, uh, the visual part of the film. Uh, the main heroine, uh, Natalia Pavlovna, is uh, compared um, uh, to uh, Salome. Uh, and um, there are some more visual codes, um, uh, typically decadent visual codes um, used in this film, for example, the code of uh, spider web, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and um, the symbolism is revealed through uh, the subverted ethical concepts and constructs, which is uh, uh, extremely important for Vinichenko in his uh, uh, symbolist um, approach to dramaturgy uh, as um, uh, uh, one of the uh, discussions um, of this film in London um, uh, noticed uh, that uh, the um, uh, paradoxical approach to um, 
uh, values and ethical uh, concepts uh, uh, seems to be borrowed from uh, Oscar Wilde uh, by Vinicienko, uh, like when the main heroine um, is saying that uh, uh, the lie is ultimate truth, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the truth is the aged uh, lie, uh, something like this. And there are lots of um, uh, such paradoxical uh, statements. Uh, so that um, the lie was um, uh, a starting point um, triggering a number of cinematographies which were engendered by the uh, whole um, uh, team uh, uh, of creators of the lie. On the one hand, um, uh, as we mentioned, Viskovsky did not stop at the uh, Ukrainian independent uh, art house um, uh, but uh, uh, joined to uh, the uh, uh, found, uh, foundations of the national cinematography of uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, on the other hand, the members of the team of the lie also contributed uh, straight afterwards, we can say, to the independent cinematographies of Soviet republics. And uh, uh, the brightest uh, figure is um, uh, obviously, uh, Amo Beck uh, featuring in this film as uh, the uh, seducer, the main villain, uh, Ivan Stratonovich, who blackmailed the heroine and drove her uh, to suicide. Uh, but we remember that uh, he was um, uh, Armenian by his origin. Ambachtsum Beknazarian was actually his name, and uh, uh, he is considered to be the founder of five national cinematographies of uh, Armenia, Georgia, Tajikistan, uh, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan to some extent. Though in Uzbekistan, he was not probably uh, the, uh, such principal uh, figure. And in, in Armenia, uh, we can tell that uh, the film studio, Armen, Fi Armen Film, uh, uh, got the name of uh, Amal Beknazarian as a principal uh, founder. We remember that he produced um, the first Armenian feature film, which was Namus uh, in uh, 1925. And um, uh, then the first Armenian sound film, uh, Pepo, we can see the poster on the slide, in uh, 1935. Uh, and um, uh, uh, he also directed the film Zangezur on establishing the Soviet regime in Armenia, which became a, St a Stalin uh, prize winner uh, in 1943. Uh, but uh, as we can see, the drone of his career in Moscow, he used to be a sportsman. That's why you got that kind of picture of him in the slide. And the most decadent Asian lover, uh, of uh, the film of Russian Empire, uh, as he was uh, playing the devil in Devil Scherzer, or the decadent poet in The Keys to Happiness. Uh, um, and um, uh, when um, uh, the newspaper uh, headlines brought uh, the news uh, on the murder of uh, Grigory Rasputin, uh, um, uh, Amobek was invited uh, to three films at once to uh, play uh, Felix Yusupov, the murderer, uh, extremely decadent figure, so-called Russian Dorian Gray, uh, and he accepted all the uh, three offers. Uh, so neither of uh, these films um, uh, seem to um, uh, have survived. Uh, and um, uh, somewhat uh, different um, uh, example from the same film, uh, as opposite to Bek Nazarev, Nikolai Malikov, who played uh, the husband uh, in the lie, uh, a native uh, of Kiev. Um, uh, brought the Ukrainian decadent presence uh, on the European silent screen. Uh, and
and um, he started from Germany and his uh, uh, Psisha de Tanzerin uh, Katerina, uh, Psisha the dancer of Catherine the Great uh, in English, uh, became a full length uh, to our uh, historical masterpiece uh, with rich costumes, sets, and the use uh, of uh, color. Uh, and uh, Psisha was the top of uh, some uh, contemporary festivals of archival silence. Uh, uh, I saw it in Belia Stolby. Uh, and uh, though <laughs> not all the all, um, all of the um, yeah, film historians uh, film historians uh, would um, uh, agree with me um, on the quality of the film as in terms of uh, this uh, uh, avant-garde Soviet uh, prior. Um, I have mentioned as paradigmal um, uh, such uh, films as uh, Psisha, for example, uh, can uh, seem to uh, picturesque, to pre pretentious, and so on and so on. So that uh, it's kind of different approach, really, either uh, decadent um, uh, or um, Soviet uh, avant-garde inspired approach, we can tell. Uh, and uh, afterwards, Malikov uh, moved to France and produced a number of successful films. And um, one more character of uh, on uh, one more character on this um, slide, uh, a character from um, a different film, but also a, a decadent film from uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky, which was also our uh, archival finding and which was also um, screened uh, in uh, Berwick College, uh, owing to Dr. Sasha Dovzik. Uh, it was uh, Satan Merit them uh, and um, uh, it's my pleasure to say that Professor Phil Cavendish was a discussant at, at that event uh, and um, the character Varvara Yanova the same as Nikolai Malikov represented this key trace of cinematic decadence uh, in Europe in France where she uh, made a successful career uh, in the 1920s um, when she moved um, uh, from uh, Kiev to France when she uh, immigrated, uh, but film historians remember her first of all um, uh, as uh, so-called Russian Dorian Gray uh, in the um, uh, uh, Holtz uh, film, ad film adaptation of uh, Oscar Wilde's novel. Um, yeah, but um, uh, she is. Uh, she was uh, not less um, uh, uh, remembered at the same time uh, as uh, not just a successful actress of um, Russian Kiev drama, uh, but as. Um, a, um, um, uh, uh, can we put it that, that way? Um, as the part uh, of. Um, uh, the cultural text of uh, uh, key uh, key of decadence, uh, and I would uh, address uh, here a number of memoirs. Uh, uh, when, for example, Faina Ganievskaya, who was a Soviet uh, movie star, in her uh, Crimean uh, diary, uh, noticed that uh, noticed about uh, Yanova that uh, uh, playing Dorian Gray on the screen was indecent and scandalous. But who would otherwise? have known Yanova outside Kiev, uh, asked Ranevskaya, um, displaying a kind of Soviet imperial uh, approach in a certain way. Um, uh, but uh, another memory is the immigrant uh, writer uh, Galina Kuznetsova, known majorly by her relationship with uh, Ivan Bunin, implied in her grass diary um, that um, Yanova um, had especially aroused uh, in her friends the feeling of the atmosphere of the pre-revolutionary Kiev uh, in the recollections of uh, meeting her like wearing a huge veiled hat on uh, Fischatik, uh, the main uh, street, or um, uh, they remembered how they sent um, uh, the buckets of uh, cyclamens or some other decadent uh, flowers. Um, 
after the uh, premieres of, of uh, symbolist plays on the uh, stage uh, of Nikolai Solovtsov theater where she um, uh, starred. Uh, but um, it, it, it would be a real mistake uh, to consider Varvara Yanova uh, kind of the uh, part of uh, um, uh, Russian imperial text uh, on uh, Kiev stage uh, because uh, she joined actively uh, the uh, processes of uh, establishing the independent um, Ukrainian um, cinematic decadence um, in Kiev um, in times of uh, People's Soviet Republic and it's first of all her collaboration uh, with uh, Alexander Vaznesensky, uh, who worked uh, in Kiev then, and uh, uh, she uh, acted uh, in his um, uh, Lord of Life um, uh, in the uh, lead female uh, role, uh, which was um, as, as a film which was produced by Bojta uh, uh, Tomaszewski, um, uh, and um, uh, she collaborated with a number of uh, independent uh, uh, film studios uh, in uh, uh, Kiev, uh, so that. Um, uh, and uh, she uh, joined a number uh, of uh, um, uh, independent Ukrainian uh, institute or uh, theatrical uh, projects uh, in theatrical uh, um, uh, education in uh, Kiev. So that well, these were quite local initiatives, nothing uh, like an institute. But uh, um, she was one of the uh, pioneers of. Um, uh, the education for actors, as uh, it was also a, a kind of a f field for, colon uh, for colonization. And uh, um, uh, she brought this uh, Kiev presence uh, uh, to the uh, French screen, and uh, she became quite successful uh, on this um, uh, French screen. Uh, and um, uh, thus, um, uh, we can sum up a number of impacts of cinematic decadence upon the ethnic and uh, national cinematography within the Soviet state and beyond, uh, but the list of the representatives um, um, uh, of this uh, Ukrainian decadent presence on the world screen remains uh, open because I have mentioned just a few figures um, relating to um, unknown Vyacheslav Viskovsky, Viskovsky's um, uh, films. But uh, if uh, uh, we go beyond, uh, we can see uh, much more uh, bright examples. And if we get back to uh, Vera Holodna, uh, who was originally from Poltava, we must uh, mention one more bright actor, decadent actor from Poltava, who was obviously Gregory uh, Maga, uh, as uh, uh, he was a, a specific uh, type of uh, decadent um, uh, actor, uh, 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 he was practicing uh, 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 screen psychoanalysis, so to say. Uh, it uh, um, uh, became the part of his uh, image uh, after uh, the most um, decadent of uh, uh, his roles, um, uh, which was the thought based on the uh, story uh, uh, by Leonid Andreev, um, the film uh, directed by Vladimir Gardin in 1916, uh, 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 as uh, the main hero, Dr. Kirzhenzev, who was a maniac obsessed uh, with the rationality of uh, insanity, uh, how uh, to um, uh, simulate uh, insanity uh, by means of scientific method and uh, uh, how this methodology bec uh, becomes uh, uh, insanity uh, in, uh, in itself. Uh, so that um, I, I apologize that I don't um, have the uh, poster from uh, this, this very films. Uh, 
the, the, there is um, a number of uh, Hmaya's uh, shots uh, in um, the pre-revolutionary film journals, and I've got it somewhere, <laughs> uh, but I, I promise to find it when uh, uh, some uh, new article on the subject is supposed to be published uh, as they still exist but uh, what 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 we, what we see is these are basically the most famous uh, of uh, his european uh, decadent uh, images uh, it's uh, uh, the mm, piece of uh, Polish uh, decadence, Mocny uh, Człowiek, uh, where he played the main part of this Polish Nietzsche, Henrik Bielecki, uh, and uh, he did it like authentically Polish actor, uh, by the way, um, uh, the director of uh, this film, uh, the, po uh, the Polish director Henrik Szaga, uh, he, uh, he considered actually himself an apprentice of uh, Vsevolod Meichold, uh, who produced uh, the same Mocny Człowiek, uh, the strong man uh, in Russian Empire. And it's the famous uh, Raskolnikov uh, by uh, Robert Wiener, uh, not decadent, but uh, brightly German expressionist film uh, and uh, surely uh, Gregory Hmara is famous for his relationship with um, and marriage with uh, uh, Asta Nielsen and on this slide you can see them together in one more uh, film uh, Crown of uh, Terms uh, also by Robert Wiener uh, with Hmara featuring as Jesus Christ uh, and uh, Asta Nielsen as uh, Mary Magdalene uh, and um, apart from that, uh, you can really mention quite a number of Ukrainian decadent uh, film stars on European screen, uh, such as Helena Makovska, half Polish, half Ukrainian from uh, Krivy Rih, uh, who became the diva of Itali Italian national decadence, as we've mentioned, Danuncianesi Mo Cinematografico, as she featured uh, in uh, uh, the most famous um, film adaptations of Danunzio's plays, uh, La Gioconda or La Fiaccola Sotto, in, uh, Sotto il Mojo, and a number of just decadent uh, silence. Either this uh, were uh, Xenia Desni or Elena Levitska, um, who both worked uh, in Germany with the director Johannes Gute. Uh, and Johannes Gute, as far as we remember, um, filmed uh, Venetienko's plays uh, in uh, sets uh, of German expressionism. And the Black Panther, where Alena Polivitska uh, featured, um, was based on the script uh, not by Venetienko. Uh, well, Venetienko contributed as well, but by uh, Hans Janowitz, uh, who is famous. Uh, for Dr. Caligari, so that uh, when uh, uh, we are just uh, tracing all those numerous ties uh, explored by an unusual way, which is not determined um, by the uh, grand narrative of film history and um, uh, film critics. Uh, um, uh, we, uh, uh, th then we um, we are not establishing new paradigms, but um, we are kind of undermining the existing paradigms by by this. Um, uh, um, uh, poorly explored um, ties and uh, uh, traces. Uh, I would uh, just mention uh, a, a, a totally different uh, subject of Ukrainian presence. Um, uh, it's um, uh, the presence of U Ukrainian um, uh, well, uh, actors and directors of Ukrainian origin in Hollywood film industry, and these were primary uh, Jewish from Ukraine, uh, such as Maurice Schwartz or uh, Paul Muni or Anatoly Litvak, um, and um, quite a number of them. Um, uh, still, it's a topic for uh, some um, next bit of research, as it remains completely unexplored. Um, uh, 
in terms of his uh, uh, ties and uh, traces. Uh, um, uh, uh, you can find the trace of Vyacheslav Iskovsky here as well, as on the one hand, uh, uh, he is claimed uh, to have tried to fit in the uh, Hollywood film industry uh, in the beginning of 1920s. Um, uh, but uh, we, uh, we do not see any uh, archival proofs, just the statements of film historians. But uh, but on the other hand, um, Viskovsky uh, served um, as a director uh, for Maurice Schwartz uh, in his uh, unique Yiddish theater in New York uh, in uh, um, uh, 19. Um, uh, 22 and 23, uh, and um, it has archival proofs, but it's um, definitely uh, the topic for some next um, uh, discussion. And uh, so that uh, when we come to conclusion, uh, we just um, uh, change uh, uh, the angle of view uh, when uh, we are not supposed to prove what is specifically uh, Ukrainian about uh, such films as The Lie or any other uh, lost and found bits of Ukrainian cinematic uh, decadence. Uh, but um, when we explore um, uh, this uh, uh, ethnic diversity uh, which constitutes uh, the lots of um, uh, uh, filmmakers, actors, uh, and their basic plots and um, their contribution to uh, ethnic uh, national cinematographies, to um, uh, Western European cinematography, to American cinematography, and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, we, we are just um, uh, coming to question what is specifically Russian uh, in the cinematography of Russian Empire, whether uh, such uh, a Russian uh, substance actually exists uh, in this cinematography or so-called uh, Russian uh, identity. And I would conclude uh, with um, a certain version of uh, answer towards this question of uh, Russianness. What, what is Russianness in uh, uh, this um, uh, case? We can say that uh, um, the act of uh, uh, free will in making a cultural choice towards uh, Russian cinematography, Russian subjects, and Russian language, uh, and so on. But when a subject of this choice becomes murdered for his uh, ethnic or national identity, which is unalienable from him, either Jewish or Ukrainian, either Tatar or Buryat, and so on, this gesture of a uh, free will towards Russianness might have become easily withdrawn. And the arguments of language, religion, or historical belonging to the territory of former empire or some empire to be, these arguments do not work anymore. Thanks very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Olga. That's absolutely uh, fascinating. You're, you're asking some very, very important questions. Um, uh, those of you who've uh, looked into the chat will know that Rachel has had to uh, temporarily leave because she has an important appointment, which is unavoidable and she cannot miss. So I'm going to be chairing the question and answer sessions. Um, so uh, the floor is open to anybody who wants to ask questions or to make comments. There are, there is one comment from, is that, I see, uh, yeah, no, you have a question. I see uh, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, would you like to put it in person and switching on your camera so that everybody can see you? Hello? or I can read it out. There's one new message. Okay, I, I, if, there's a, if you have a problem uh, with your camera, um, I'm quite happy to read out the question. So the question is, many thanks, Olga, for such an informative presentation 
and your much needed conclusion. I have a question about Biskowski's The Minaret of Death. Um, Chloe Drier, in her book Cinema, Nation and Empire in Uzbekistan, notes the film for its exoticism and orientalism and for being implicitly imperial in its treatment of the Uzbeks and draws on Uzbek intellectuals' reception of the time that corresponds to this view. Uh, it would be interesting to know your views on that. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Asia, for your question, and uh, I'm glad that you have addressed uh, actually the uh, book by Floyd, uh, um, Cinema Nation and Empire in Uzbekistan, as it's uh, one. Um, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, it was just the only uh, bit in English language on the minerals of uh, this, uh, as uh, it was uh, uh, just uh, a recent uh, finding, so, so that um, uh, we do not face that many uh, uh, interpretations. Uh, um, so that uh, thanks very much for bringing this uh, text uh, into discussion. Surely I won't uh, um, yeah, argue um, yeah, the statements uh, in the context of uh, general uh, film process, uh, processes um, uh, in Uzbekistan either uh, uh, within the um, this um, imperial borders or in uh, in Soviet times. Uh, I, I I would briefly comment that uh, I do basically um, uh, agree, and that uh, um, this um, subject needs more, much more uh, profound uh, insights um, into the uh, context uh, um, um, context of. Uh, uh, decadence uh, in Uzbekistan as such, as it's quite um, uh, um, uh, well, um, I, 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 I would say not, uh, not that well known uh, for uh, intellectual uh, intellectual uh, reading in English or in Russian, uh, so that um, uh, uh, perhaps uh, I would uh, add uh, this uh, uh, point of view, uh, kind of professional point of view, uh, as for example, if we compare that with uh, uh, Georgian decadence, which is uh, quite well explored, and uh, some uh, other ex-Soviet republics, uh, um, which uh, uh, are kind of well known in these terms, uh, either uh, within or beyond any cinematic context. So that's just um, a brief answer. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, response. Um, we also have a question from Samar. Do you want to unmute yourself first? Samar, can you unmute yourself? We still can't hear you, I'm afraid, Samar. Can you unmute yourself if you're able to? Or you can put the question in the chat. And I'm quite happy for me to, uh, to read it out. <laughs> oh, OK. We seem to have lost Samar for the moment. Oh, uh, I, I see uh, one more question by uh, John. Uh, John, John Wanderworth, if I uh, spell um, his yeah, name correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, thanks very much about this uh, question. As uh, I believe that uh, it's uh, the uh, core uh, question when we speak uh, on uh, early cinematic decadence. Uh, it's uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, conflict uh, uh, between uh, 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 the motion picture art, uh, which was perceived as the art uh, for, purely for entertainment, uh, uh, and um, uh, this uh, discourse uh, of uh, literary symbolism uh, and uh, decadence, uh, which um, became brought uh, to uh, 
the film discourse, but uh, how how relevant uh, uh, it uh, uh, might have been. As um, I would uh, refer uh, to. Um, uh, one more brilliant American uh, uh, um, uh, decadent film scholar, Professor Robert Robert Bird from uh, Chicago, uh, who told that uh, it was uh, uh, 1925, uh, the year when. Uh, uh, Battleship Potemkin by Sergei uh, Eisenstein uh, uh, appeared on the screen uh, when um, uh, the uh, film art uh, proved uh, uh, finally proved to be an art, and uh, that was um, uh, the a point of uh, death of symbolist culture, because uh, the symbolism uh, as uh, such uh, did not recognize uh, film art as, as an art, because uh, it was kind of uh, lacking um, uh, total involvement in terms of synthesis of arts, Gesamtkunstwerk, uh, uh, as uh, it uh, um, uh, required uh, uh, some passivity from the uh, subject so that uh, he could not uh, uh, be the participant uh, of uh, uh, some um, uh, collective mysterial uh, act. Uh, and well, sometimes this uh, act of mystery might uh, uh, have been an act of political mystery, why not? Uh, so that um, it's um, an eternal question uh, whether those films uh, were um, uh, made just for entertainment, right? Uh, because uh, the most um, uh, symbolist uh, um, uh, films uh, of uh, this uh, epoch uh, uh, made either by Evgeny Bauer or uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky, uh, they still um, uh, have a plot, right? Uh, and um, uh, they, they still have this uh, double coding uh, in uh, um, uh, in the script itself, right? So, uh, so that uh, the Arnovo, um, this Arnovo context uh, had to be uh, brought uh, by um, uh, the visual framing, uh, by uh, bringing the uh, symbols on the screen, and uh, uh, so on and so on. Uh, and if we uh, uh, mentioned the same uh, 1925 uh, when we see um, the purely symbolist uh, films uh, on the uh, Western screen, uh, such as uh, um, uh, L'Invitation en Voyage by Germain Dulac, which was based on the verse by uh, Charles Baudelaire. Uh, when, uh, uh, she's uh, uh, trying to discard the narrative uh, and to create the purely uh, symbolist Baudelairean uh, film as a chain of association. It's totally a different uh, approach. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, uh, it, um, it was inevitably entertainment in um, this um, uh, um, uh, uh, in, in this exactly uh, period of time, but uh, um, uh, the point uh, is that uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, film art and uh, the space of movie theaters uh, brought actually this uh, uh, atmosphere of uh, collective mysterial uh, action, uh, which was important uh, for decadent and symbolist culture, so that this um, collective action might have been profoundly political. Um, but um, sadly, um, I um, would not think that uh, um, the Ukrainian audience uh, um, uh, of um, uh, this period of civil war would uh, have acknowledged um, the significance uh, of the um, first uh, Ukrainian uh, cinematic decadent film such as uh, The Lion and its political context. Okay, thank you, uh, Olga. That's great. Uh, John has written to thank you. Um, I know that Samar has tried to re-enter 
Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're there, Samar, and if you are, because I can't see whether you want to ask your question. Um, if not, are there any other questions? I don't think there's anything in the chat. I do have a question myself. Oh, um, sorry, we have a question from Natasha Drubeck. Um, uh, I was intrigued by the connection between your concept of decadence and decolonization. Could you please explain the methodology behind this? Uh, right. Uh, thanks very much, Natasha, for your question. Um, it's it's um, uh, uh, the uh, perhaps it's the, it's, the, it's the principal um, uh, um, <clears throat> methodological warning uh, warning for me uh, in uh, what we may call decadence film. Uh, studies not to appropriate uh, completely uh, the methodology of uh, post-colonial studies or well, uh, any other kind of queer studies or um, uh, whatever so uh, so that um, uh, in this view i am taking uh, some um, local uh, concepts uh, from um, a post uh, post colonial theory uh, and um, uh, uh, the concepts uh, of uh, uh, locality and um, uh, diversity in terms of uh, 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 decadence culture values become significant uh, and um, uh, in this view um, the decadent uh, approach um, uh, becomes uh, just uh, a strategy of individual tracing of um, uh, culture um, uh, without sticking to any grand narrative well i, I i'm sorry that um, i am um, uh, consciously uh, avoiding right now uh, uh, referring to uh, some uh, um, definite uh, um, uh, schools approaches or, 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 or theories, but uh, I would um, put it very care very carefully in. Um, uh, uh, this case, uh, uh, as um, uh, I would say that um, uh, in uh, decadence um, uh, studies, uh, we have to um, uh, estimate um, the phenomena in uh, their own terms, in terms uh, of uh, foundation philosophy, and um, uh, the uh, choice of any um, uh, concepts uh, becomes also contextual so so that um, well it's kind of a, a, a really um, a careful methodological answer okay that's great um i think we've got time for one more question if anybody wants to uh to ask anything um, if not, I do have a question. It slightly builds on what Natasha has just said. I was very interested in your analysis of the last tango and the, the, the potential decol decolonizing resonances of the tango dance. Um, and I wanted to push you a little bit further in relation to that particular work um, on the basis, I presume, of the script and the subject as far as you know it. Uh, and the reason I ask this is because if the tango is, a, is, an, is an acknowledged international subject, I mean, obviously it's an, an Argentinian uh, subject, but it becomes an international phenomenon. Um, so the question is, what is the, is there anything particular about the last tango, the film, uh, albeit with only fragments remaining, that encourages that kind of decolonizing perception or or subject you've uh, as opposed to any other treatment of the tango subject mm -hmm. and I asked this question also partly because you know I've read your writings in relation to Khalodna and I know that you've argued in the past very interestingly and fascinatingly that she is coded as a southern subject as a Ukrainian subject so I wondered whether these two things came together in terms of this mm -hmm. film um and 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 how much we know about the film, bearing in mind the surviving fragments. We have do we do we have a screenplay for it, and so on. 
Uh, right. Thanks very much, uh, Phil, for the great question, uh, and uh, it's so complex. Uh, so, so that um, I should start um, uh, with um, uh, this uh, uh, necessity of bringing in uh, kind of uh, bringing in the context uh, uh, first, uh, uh, bringing in uh, any uh, political, cultural, uh, literary context. Uh, as uh, I, I try to do that uh, in terms of uh, Argentinian uh, and uh, Ukrainian uh, political history of. Um, uh, this period of time, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, the uh, context. Well, what 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 we can. Uh, 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 just mentioned as the intertext um, in terms of pretext of. Um, this film, because uh, uh, the uh, main. Uh, um, uh, uh, script uh, for the film, uh, it's um, uh, still the text by Isa Kremer. Uh, as uh, there are numerous um, uh, synopsis uh, published in the film journals, but uh, 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 surprisingly, uh, Vyacheslav Viskovsky's um, uh, manuscript uh, archive in Moscow um, uh, lists uh, uh, just his uh, 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 scripts in projects, but none of his uh, scripts uh, which were uh, really staged. Well, maybe some of the Soviet period. Um, I, um, I, 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 I don't want to uh, make um, uh, rude mistakes, but not of the pre-revolutionary period. And um, so that uh, ju just surprisingly, these are completely kind of uh, two different massives uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, pretexts. Uh, on, the, on, on the one hand, what was written, what was published. Of course, there were lots of reviews, uh, lots of uh, um, uh, reviews, not only for uh, the film, uh, but uh, also for Holodna and Raunich performances and so on and so on. Um, uh, but uh, um, there is um, actually one um, uh, more important uh, um, uh, uh, textual background. Um, uh, I should have mentioned that uh, that uh, um, uh, Viskovsky, um, uh, apart from the fact that he wrote uh, most of his uh, scripts, uh, um, uh, uh, which uh, have not uh, obviously survived, um, but he was a writer and he published uh, quite a number of symbolist, sto symbolist stories, and um, uh, none of them uh, is believed to be screened by himself. Uh, so that there, there is kind of some uh, third massive of pretext, which is also really important. Uh, but if we leave it all behind, and if we just um, see um, um, uh, as, as the picture as it is, uh, to regard it uh, in uh, terms uh, of uh, uh, decolonizing the body in terms of um, visuality and what we call carpalistics. Well, well what uh, Yugi Tsivyan called uh, carpalistics, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, a study of uh, uh, the gesture on the screen, um, which is uh, symbolic and uh, political at the same time. Uh, and um, uh, uh, what's uh, uh, particular uh, about um, this uh, uh, tongue uh, uh, in the film that uh, we don't see that much dance uh, in this fragment. I believe that the, 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 uh, there was much more in the lost in, in the lost parts. Uh, but uh, um, uh, the way Viskovsky works with uh, this uh, 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 corporeality of uh, actors that um, uh, there. Um, uh, movements, their uh, gestures, especially of those um, uh, uh, tango lovers, uh, Claw and Jure, uh, they are uh, uh, stylized uh, uh, as uh, uh, tango figures. Uh, 
Uh, so, so that uh, uh, it's uh, really interesting um, how Viskovsky um, uh, uh, works with um, a body on the screen and reflects body on the screen. Uh, because uh, uh, what he displays in the last tango, uh, it's actually um, uh, the phenomenon of uh, colonized body and colonized um, by means of uh, tradition. Um, it's uh, tradition of the dance, uh, which uh, uh, becomes, as uh, we, we have shown, um, uh, its own um, uh, complete opposite, as uh, it um, was, uh, as uh, it started as a dance of uh, slavery um, from uh, 19th century. Uh, and um, uh, in um, the twentieth century, it was um, uh, uh, perceived uh, as um, uh, a dance of liberation. First of all, the gender and sexual liberation, uh, yeah. and um, like uh, uh, in this view, um, uh, this uh, body colonized. Um, uh, by means uh, of tradition, by means of dance, by means of uh, this language uh, of uh, uh, fan, something uh, coming from this uh, old uh, Spain. Um, I wish uh, we could see more of um, Viskovsky's films to uh, see how differently he works uh, with uh, this uh, um, uh, colonized, decolonized, liberated, diseased, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, corporeality, as it's really important for him. Right. Okay. That's that's wonderful. Um, thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much to those who have put questions um, earlier on as part of this session. Um, uh, thanks very much for joining us this evening as well. Um, it remains for me simply to thank Olga Kuryova for delivering such a fascinating uh, talk and discussion about. Uh, a subject which is um, not only hugely important, but close to many of our hearts, especially right now. Um, uh, we have uh, sent out information about our next uh, seminar, which is going to take place next week. It concerns uh, pathos in Eisenstein and in Zola. So we very much look forward to seeing everybody uh, as part of that event, um, which will also be online. Um, so best of wishes to Olga and we, Rachel and I look forward to seeing everybody um, next week and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting and for being with us today. <laughs>